See, when God begins to shine his light, when God begins to give revelation, when God begins to release his voice to you, then suddenly it gives you the courage, it gives you the power to begin to move forward, to advance, to begin to break out of things, to be able to break through in your circumstance. And I'm telling you, that is the season that we are in right now with the Lord. The Lord is saying, this is going to be a time that my people must know my voice to be able to navigate the seasons that we're in right now, to be able to navigate the darkness that's going on in the earth, to navigate the lies and the deceptions that are going on in the earth today. Amen. And God is saying, I want to send down my light. I want to release my glory in you to be a light wherever you go. Amen. Lift your hands up and just say, Lord, I want some of that. Amen. <laughs> now, right around that time, I had this dream. And, I, and many of you know that I'm a dreamer. I, I hear from the Lord um, quite often in dreams. And I had probably, up to this point, this was in 2015, I probably can't really tell you that I'd ever really had a dream about angels before that time. Um, but this particular night, I had a dream. We had just landed in Australia. Um, we were over with our, uh, our friends, Greg and Julie Bailey, who are the Christian International Representatives um, for Australia and New Zealand. And we were staying in their home, and we had just flown, whatever, 30-something hours, got there and um, had a good sleep. And, and, and early in the morning, I had this dream. And I saw four angels in my dream. They were dressed in white. They had their arms linked together like standing linked elbow to elbow. And they introduced themselves to me as the four horsemen of awakening. The four horsemen of awakening. And they said, we are the necessary team to bring nations into awakening. And then one by one they started introducing themselves to me in the dream. And so, just to pause here and say, when I woke up, I talked to my husband about it, and the only four horsemen that we knew about was the four horsemen in Revelation, and their names were stuff like death and famine, bad plague, bad stuff, okay? Uh, these were not those four angels, okay? These were different angels, okay? So we knew about those four horsemen, and we also knew about the offensive line of the Notre Dame back in the decades ago, way back then, a very famous offensive line. They broke the way open so that they could run the ball through. I thought, oh, that's good revelation, okay. But I didn't really know what it was about. So we had just talked about this. We hadn't really visited very much about it. And I'll come back around and tell you what the angels were. But it was very interesting because that night we went into service and Prophet Greg got up to preach. And he said, this is a very significant day for um, Australia and New Zealand, he said, because it was on this day 100 years ago that the ANZACs, which A-N-Z-A-C stands for Australia, New Zealand Army Corps. So it was the army that came from Australia and New Zealand in World War I. He said the ANZACs actually won a victory in what is modern-day, present-day Turkey against their enemy. It was called the Battle of Gallipoli. And he says they were called the Light Horsemen. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm really listening. And he began to talk about how these were, these men, when they joined up, they were given a Bible and a rifle and pretty much nothing else. And they were sent in to some of the most impossible battles. They were some of the fiercest warriors. And one of their commanders, when you read about it in history, he said, we could tell them to do anything because they were fearless and bold. And anything you told them to do, they would do. They believed anything was possible. And so it was these Anzacs that won this great battle at the Battle of Gallipoli, but then a few days later, they suffered a horrible defeat, and they had to be kind of, they had to retreat, and they had to, they had to leave. 
They came in and they evacuated them out and the enemy took over the territory again. But it was the same Anzacs just two years later that entered into Israel at a place called Beersheba, which is the southernmost part of Israel. And by the way, Beersheba means the place of covenant. And they won a significant military battle in 1917 called the Battle of Beersheba. It took place on October the 31st, 1917, which was the 400-year anniversary of when um, Martin Luther nailed, huh? You've the, nailed the 95 thesis on the door of the Wittenberg church and said, the just shall live by faith, launching the Protestant Reformation. So here, on the same day, 400 years later, the Anzacs, this crew, this motley crew of just tenacious men, they were, yeah, they were outnumbered, they were outgunned. The enemy had thousands, they had cannons, they had, gun, they had, they had uh, superior weaponry. They had all this kind of stuff. And there were only 800 Anzacs. And their commander said, charge. And they charged the battle lines of the enemy against every odd. Thousands against 800. Sounds biblical, doesn't it? Thousands against 800. And they charged and they broke through the enemy's line. And when they did, and you can read historical accounts of this, when they did, the, they were fighting the Germans and the Ottoman Turks, Muslims. When they broke through the enemy's line, the enemy put their guns down and applauded them. They said, we have never seen such bravery. We have never seen such courage. And the, this little group of 800 defeated an army of thousands because of their bravery. But when you actually began to read into the history of this, you actually found something else was going on. How many think maybe something else was going on? Because when you read the history, there are hundreds of military accounts on both sides of that battle line that say, that when the Anzacs began to charge, it was as though there were light beings that were running with them. Chariots and horsemen and warriors that were charging with them on the battlefield. How else could 800 break through the thousands? How else could a, a little bayonet rifle beat guns and tanks and, and, and cannons and, and superior weaponry? I'm telling you, this is like a biblical battle. And every, on both sides, Germans, Ottoman Turks, and the, the Anzacs said, while we were running, while we were charging, there were light beings running right alongside of us. I believe we're living in a day where God is saying, listen, guys, if you'll put your trust in me, if you'll do what I ask you to do, if you'll take on yourself courage and bravery, unprecedented in this time, and you'll stand your ground and you'll go after the things I tell you to go after, the Lord says, I'm going to send angels down that are going to fight with you, that are going to fight for you. Come on, we see, we see this throughout the Old Testament. God is saying we are not alone. God is saying we're not just here alone fighting for our nation or fighting for our families or fighting for, we're not alone. God is saying all I'm looking for is some people that will show up. And when you show up, the Lord says I have the ability to send angels down that will cause a showing off of my great strength and my great power. Let me tell you, that battle at Beersheba was so significant that those Anzacs walked straight up and they overthrew 1,400 years of Islamic rule over Jerusalem, they walked right in. And because they had heard the stories, when they got there, the enemy surrendered.